Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for joining the TeamZ community call in October 17th, 2024. So first of all, let's start with the, the usual agenda. Um, I added just one PR, so we are uh, in the section of PRs and issues. I added this PR. Yeah, I was mostly thinking what should we do with this because I guess it was open last year more or less and uh, well, lots of conflicts, last comment from Jakob but even before on June, um, yeah, one of the users on the, um, on the PR um, say that he wasn't going to back to this uh, as soon as possible resolve everything but it's still there so how we should move on with this pinging the user i don't know if he if it's uh, he's already still uh, working on it or thinking about it so he's no time any opinions I guess pinging the user at least once more seems reasonable, if unlikely to. It's worth a try, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. I was just going through the, the pull request and they say, yeah, so this opened since one year without any software improvement. So. Uh, okay, let me, I will ping the user right after the, the stand-up. Let me just first take a note about this and see if he will come back to us. Is it only me or Paolo's sound is really low? I mean, when you spoke, Tom, that made me jump, literally. Yeah, it's same for me. Let me... Uh, okay. Now it's better? Yes. Yeah, Fedora decided to set lower volume for my mic. So Paolo is going to ping the user. Yeah. Okay, that was just this one, at least from me. Uh, does anyone have any PR or issue that want to highlight to discuss or something like that seems not so proposal uh, I also added these three so uh, the first one is just about um, mm, the the, the um, so archiving the canary uh, I just um, commented this morning, uh, we have enough votes for having this uh, PR to be, uh, this proposal to be accepted and merged. Six binding votes plus one non-binding. So I would say let's wait by the end of today and then we can just merge. Uh, so it will be approved. We are going to archive the canary. And uh, then I guess, I don't know if Lukas is on the call, Lukas is volunteering to do the, the rest, so archiving the project as the one who wrote the proposal. Lukas is not on the call. So, yeah, let's say I'm going to ping Lukas, asking uh, if it's fine uh, to proceed and archive the project. So can I just ask a, a general question? Yep. Um, the, the Canary was, is quite a useful tool for, for running things in production. Um, obviously, Go is not the main maintainer's language. We were talking a while back about producing a new canary written in Java. Now, I've kind of missed out a bit on what was the decision around that. I think I get the feeling it was decided that to not bother, or 
No, the decision was uh, so. Uh, Lukas uh, uh, already uh, as a kind of POC of the canary written in Java, uh, but it was written for his thesis at right. the university. So the thing is that uh, uh, if we want that in Java, we should discuss what we want from the canary because uh, we started the kind of discussion. I remember a proposal from started by Tom together with Lukas. Uh, it was not clear if re replicating the same features that we have today in the Canary written in Go or having something different, because anyway, we are going to use two different clients, the Go one and the Java one, they are written in different languages, providing different features. And um, yeah, at the beginning, that was the idea to rewrite this in Java, but then it was not clearly uh, if it's going to be useful, how many people using it. So. Uh, it was worth the effort of writing it in Java. For now, we are going to archive this one because, you know, there are no releases since months, uh, even some issues that are not fixed or answered. So, um, and as, as you say, so it's, it's uh, so it's difficult for a maintainer to, to take the pace yeah. uh, with a dif different language or even for Sarama which is missing stuff, is lagging behind the Java client. So different reasons that are in the proposal, but not not uh, right. So not the uh, decision related to rewrite this in Java. Right. OK, um, so sorry, so... guys, but we should stop lying to ourselves that this had anything to do with the Go stuff. Nobody touched the project for I don't know how long. Nobody managed to do any CV fixes and do new release with the CV fixes and so on. That has nothing to do with it being in Go. Just nobody had enough time to work on this. That's the reason why it's dead in the first place. OK. I mean, it, to be, we to be honest, given the number of users asking about it, I don't think it has that many users either. Well, it could be a bit of a chicken and an egg thing as well, though. Because if no one's maintaining it, then the people think they can't. We read it, used it, and we did. We had we had some internal forks, but uh, some improvements. But I never got the chance to push them up because everyone gets busy. So I understand that. Um, that's fine. I totally understand that. You know, we're resource constrained, but it, it is useful having a per. The thing we really wanted, or I really wanted, running it in production was a per broker processing metric, which this didn't quite provide. But if something did, would be really useful but again it's just a thing on the list so okay great just wanted some context if we get some if we magically get some more resource or more people are interested maybe we can resurrect it yeah so maybe for the people watching the recording like it's great that you used it in reddit but yeah maybe if you actually contributed the things to it then yes yeah, someone from reddit maybe could have been a component owner for that and could have helped to maintain it and so on right and then maybe it wouldn't be archived uh, yeah today so uh, like that's absolutely. that's the important message for everyone out there in the community using something if you are a passive user who never contributes back never gets back then this is how the software might end up and uh, so don't don't do it contribute when you are using something contribute when you do some changes uh, on your side and uh, yeah that helps to understand what is being used but it helps to find maybe new people who have more interest and thanks to that more time to work on this project yeah absolutely agree Okay, thanks, Jakub Tom. Um, let's move on to the next one that I also did. Yeah, there is this uh, proposal about uh, yeah monitoring the custom resources. Uh, it's still in draft, so in general, it's not clear to me if it should be reviewed or not. But Jakub, uh, anyway, added some comments. And uh, yeah, three weeks ago, and the uh, user didn't come back to Jakob yet with these comments. So I would say let's ping the user 
again to see I don't know if he's still working on it, thinking about it, if he was just busy. But the plan is to come back to, to the Jakub's comment and understand if this can be moved to something more than draft so that other maintainer can review. I think you can always review it even if it's in draft. Right? It's not somehow forbidden or anything. No, I know. It's sometimes I'm scared that I'm going to waste time. That, you know, it's something just throw there, but it's not the kind of, uh, yeah, not the final idea because, you know, reviewing the proposal is the right way in order to go from a, a, an idea to something better than just an idea. But yeah, anyway, I can review, of course, uh, as all the other maintainers, but I think that we should ping the user because at this point, I don't know if uh, he's still uh, interested or is looking at it. Let's say again that Paolo is going to ping the user. Okay. Then the next one. Yeah, this one is uh, is really pretty old, one year ago. Um, I went through the keep because uh, this proposal is based anyway on KIP uh, 987, which is still under discussion, but there is no discussion since one year. So I don't know what we should do with this, just leaving this open for, I don't know, next years or so, or asking again to the user what's the plan, but anyway, it doesn't depend only on the user, but how it goes in the Kafka community, I guess, if KIP is not discussed, if there are no steps forward on the KIP, there is nothing that the user can do on this side, I guess. Yeah, it's just that uh, this PR is open since one year. I don't know how much how much is, is great to have a PR just open there and staying there for, for, for one year. I, th I think the last discussion we had on the proposal, the person who opened it said they didn't mind whether it was closed or not because we already asked them in January, should we keep it open? So I'd say close it rather than it sort of sitting there. Can you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the comments? Yeah, you're right, yep. Yeah, and the, the response they said, um, they're fine either way. Okay, so I would say let's close this one. And then, uh, yeah, when keep will be, I don't know, accepted and uh, the user can, can open a new one. Uh, today's. Okay, something like this, I guess. Yeah, that's good. And then the last one, it was not me adding this one. Yeah, I added this one. So okay, this is just so... more kind of um, just to let people know what I'm planning to do with this, because I know that I've mentioned it a few times on the community calls in the past. So um, I just want to say thanks to everyone who's spent their time reviewing this. Um, and I've had a couple of discussions with some of the maintainers. And 
what we're going to do is so this original proposal was around some refactoring to um, perhaps make it slightly nicer to fit in an external certificate provider but actually given the way the code works today we think that we should be able to do it without this refactoring so what I'm planning to do is close this pull request for this proposal and open one that's more targeted at putting in an external certificate provider with the aim that we'll get it in with the flow and the reconciliation loop as it is today and then if there are improvements we want to make we can then make them once that's in um, and that should then make it easier to reason about the the reasons for the improvements and that they're actually needed so it was just more of a kind of fyi and a chance for me to say thank you to everyone who spent the time reviewing this because i know um it was quite long and there was a lot of review cycles Yep, thank you very much for putting effort on this, uh, Kate. So yeah, it was a long, really long, uh, well-written um, proposal. But as you said, anyway, it's better to focus on the on the main goal that we have, so supporting uh, external certificate managers. Okay, so again, thank you very much for that. Looking forward to the new one. Okay, so we are at the end of proposal section. If there is anything else about them, I guess we can move to our beloved uh, triage. So the first one, yeah, the first one is about, uh, we discovered that uh, the, the, the dashboard uh, re related to the metrics uh, for the bridge was not working since, uh, I don't know, version 020. And we didn't notice that because of a change in Vertex. Anyway, after some investigation, I opened an issue uh, on the Vertex folks. And uh, last week, I guess, they came back to me saying that they are going to fix the issue in Vertex itself. It's planned for uh, Vertex uh, for 5.11. So at this point, we should just uh, take this issue open, waiting for the new Vertex release, then coming back, checking that the dashboard is okay. So it's working again. Uh, yeah, and, and continue from, from there if there are any issues or everything is fine with the Vertex fix. So I would say that this one doesn't need needs triage anymore. Let me just add that will wait for Vertex 4.5.11 release. So we can remove from the needs triage. Okay, next one. Do reconciliation rolling update on cruise control even if all in secret key ref changed. I guess we already triaged that or not? No, yeah, that's waiting for it seems not to be a bug after some discussion, and we are still waiting for uh, for Kyle uh, to take care of this and, and dub double check that the code looks good. So I would say, yeah, we should ping again, Kyle. Uh, maybe he was busy during the last two weeks, and yeah, and check the status of the code. I will try to win Kyle even offline. So 
So the next one. This one is from Fede. Fede, do you want to? Yeah, so uh, I know this probably has been discussed uh, in the past, but I was not part of this discussion. Uh, so I was, I, I talked with some support engineers working on, on Stream T, uh, and they say that there are a good number of uh, users that simply install Stream Z, take examples as they are, and put into production. I know that this is wrong. Uh, we have really good documentation about this, that you need to set resources, you need to set, um, you don't use female storage, things like this. Uh, and it seems that it could be useful to maybe raise some warning uh, because they may be uh, surfaced in the web UI of OpenShift or Kubernetes in general. Uh, so I want to open this discussion again and see if we can maybe add these warnings, if you think it's useful. Uh, there I think some user reporting um, issues like this. Um, so just to give a better chance to users to maybe see that they are doing wrong, what, what they are doing wrong, and, it, and that setting resources and uh, stable storage can give you a better chance to have a stable cluster setup uh, for production usage. And maybe if you want, we can also add a flag to opt out uh, this warning because there may be some valid uh, reasons to not set resources. I don't know, maybe there are, there are some corner cases. Yeah, ju just open a discussion about this, if this can be useful. I've been reported many times about this kind of issues with uh, some users, some customers in general. So in short, this is feedback I'm, I'm, uh, um, I'm having from uh, support engineers. So uh, while uh... It looks not to be a bad idea. Jakub, can you remember me why it was rejected in the past? Raising warnings in these uh, scenarios. I just because it doesn't make sense. There are so many different scenarios where not setting the resources is the valid strategy which you want to do. So it's not something you should be raising warnings for. Maybe Jakub, can you... Can you some of these use cases here just for our understanding. Development, dedicated nodes, and so on. Yeah, I mean, I mean these, are, these are just warnings, so we are not stopping any deployment, stuff like that. Raising warnings for things which are not valid just makes people ignore the warnings. That's not how we should do things. Yeah, so I mean, uh, if they ignore documentation and solutions, uh, any written document, it, there is a good chance that they will also ignore these warnings. But my, I think maybe some of them could see them through UIs. So they, these warnings show up in UIs, various UIs. Some users really are um, heavy users of UIs, and they may be, have a chance to, to see these warnings and, and take action before opening issues and, about, and uh, support cases about uh, inst cluster instability. So, at least they say this is frequent. Uh, I don't know how if this is really true. But uh, isn't this fixable on the Kubernetes side? Because we we had this problem at Reddit all the time that people would just post without proper restrictions and limits, and yes. the compute the compute team wrote their own tooling for this. But I'm sure there's tooling out there. Yeah, and all the others. Yeah, there is support for that on the Kubernetes side, but this is up to the administrators to set restrictions on, on these. So you cannot deploy, for example, a pod if you don't specify resources. There are ways to do that. 
but still it looks that many admins don't do that. Uh, so users are, uh, can deploy, for example, Kafka without setting any resources, which is not bad per se, but in, if you have a shared, if you have a shared uh, cluster, Kubernetes cluster, that it can be a problem, right? You could have instability. Yeah, but by the way, the links that are included in the issue, like most of them, doesn't seem to have anything to do with this. So I have, so I get that this is a that it can be a problem, but I just wonder if we're then solving a wider ops problem for other teams because not setting resource limits isn't just a problem for Kafka brokers; it's a problem for any arbitrary workload, or can be, uh, particularly when you're running a lot of them co-located, which is a problem for whatever ops team is running because it's not just going to be Kafka. Um, so yeah, I, even though I, I agree that this. Not saying these is correct is is a problem. Uh, yeah. I just don't know if adding warnings is gonna if it's our job to fix it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, so it's not only a uh, Kafka problem. Any 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 application can have instability because of a lack of resources and tuning. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That could be a platform job, maybe. Yeah. So my side, I don't have a really strong opinion on that. I mean, on one side, I don't see as uh, a warning called heart. Uh, of course, we should tune the warning when raise the warning, uh, in which cases. Uh, on the other side, I can understand that users are not going to look at the log and, uh, and see that there is a warning and they are going to tune. But it's always simpler to go and open an issue. Uh, to whatever it is, GitHub issue upstream, or I don't know, a customer support case for a company. Uh, so yeah, but in general, it seems that, I don't know, even from Tom, from Jakub, there is a kind of agreement that we are trying to fix something as a kind of infrastructure issues and not a really related Kafka streams issue. So it's the but like literally um, none of the issues linked there seem to be related to what the issue actually says, or did I misunderstood what the issue is saying? I remember doing this research and they seems to be related, uh, but I can look again. Anyway, if you are so going the, to... the first one, the first one is about the operator not having enough resources. We don't raise any warnings on that, and we don't have any way to raise any warnings on that. Yeah, the, the kind of report I'm, I was talking about are uh, not public. Uh, so I was contacted by a couple of support engineers, and they said there are many cases. But uh, of like, this. And then I tried to do a search uh, on public. Why, why do you pretend that these things are related? and link them in the case when they are not. Yeah, it's fine to say that you have some other cases that are not that are not public, but... Yeah, I can also check them and remove if they're not related. Uh, so that's fine. And we, none of the support engineers showed up here to support this case. And I agree that it should be addressed at the platform level. Uh, so we can, we can close it. Maybe this one on the, on the screen is related, Jakub, the third one. You are also you know suggesting the title that... says streams a cluster operator crash. So nothing to do with the Kafka CR. 
Or yeah, but I see. Oh yes, the zookeeper are running at some point. They were pending uh, and then uh, running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right. Okay, I will. I will remove all the unrelated uh, things. I don't think you have to remove them. I think we should just reject it. So, uh, yeah, as I said, I have no strong opinion, to be honest, but I see that Jakub uh, is going to so agree on, on rejecting. Tom is anyway saying that it's not going to resolve any kind of specific infrastructure issue. It's not related to Kafka strictly. Any other opinion? Otherwise, yeah, I'm going to, to close this one and reject. I agree with Jakub and Tom. Okay, I guess something like this. Yes. Okay, let's move on on the next one. Yeah, we we had uh, yeah the possibility of uh, you know loading um, secret config map MTD and PVC uh, PVCs as volumes in order to get some more stuff on the pods, and this user is asking for uh, adding the host path uh, for if they are using Spiffy or yeah something like that. Even if I see Envoy here, anyway, and I don't know much about Spiff project. Uh, and uh, I agree with Jakub that one way could be just um, creating an host path PV and then using the PVC to map and then, of course, mounting the PVC. So there is a workaround for that instead of uh, adding uh, the support for the host path, which is anyway the same on all the pods. So that was commented last week. Uh, Yeah, I don't see it something like uh, an enhancement to add, to be honest. Do we want to... So, I, I I don't think it's necessarily... I, I would be curious to understand the use case. Yeah, I was going to say if you want how, to, to how, talk to the user. How exactly would it be used? And understand if there is something significant blocking going through the. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure I ever used PVCs through host path or host path through PVC. So maybe there are some limitations. So yeah, I, I would think the user, if he or she can get back to the points I raised. Like, I don't think it would be that hard to support this. It's just that, yeah, we probably don't want to add the things just for the fun of adding the things without understanding the value and the need. So I think, yeah, it could be good to clarify that. Yeah, agree. Okay, so I target the user this way. Let's see if uh, she's coming back to us.
And the next one. Yeah, that was opened by Tina. Uh, I don't see Tina on the call. No. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, I'm yeah, here. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Tina. I have not the entire list of people. I have to scroll down. Go ahead, Tina. Yeah. Yeah, so this is something I discovered while I was working on the uh, on different rebalance issue. I've noticed that um, we could sometimes hit the um, the limit that we can have uh, uh, for active user tasks. And when we're querying about the rebalance task that is ongoing, that uh, that query creates another task, another active task. And if we hit the limit, we get 500 back. And then the rebalance uh, goes into not ready state. But this is not related to the actual rebalance task that we're trying to query about. So it didn't seem to make sense to me to uh, mark the Kafka rebalance as not ready. So I wondered if we should implement it, uh, implement retry or um, or not basically, yeah, uh, immediately mark it as not ready. Yeah, I was going through this and uh, yeah, I totally agree, which is not great moving the Kafka rebalance in not ready because it does not actually mean that there are issues with the rebalancing. Maybe the rebalancing is just going on, uh, but we are just hitting this uh, limit. So I would say not, I don't know if the retry is the right way uh, or we should have some retry and then at some point, I don't know, adding in the status. Uh, Yes, some information about this. Uh, I don't know if uh, that we are hitting this limit or uh, and we retry later or just leave it the status as it is. Uh, because we can't get the actual status yet from this control and use the retry. Kat, have we have we done Tina, have you done much testing on this? Because we can just bump the number of active tasks that are allowed. Because presumably we're getting periodic reconciles and that's bumping the number of user task requests going up. But hopefully they complete and drop off the end. So if going from, for example, five to 10 with a two minute just takes it off, it might, uh, if we've got access to it, maybe bumping it. We should definitely have retry logic. Uh, that, that should be there and, and back off logic as well. But we can actually also bump this on the cruise control side. Well, you you can bump yes, but uh, you you never know if at some point you can reach the the new limit. So in general, oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, we I, should we I'm should saying, look at we should look at both. We should have a yeah, backup. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. For for sure. Well, in general, it's not something that we set by default. So we leave when you in the in the Kafka Castle resource you set the cruise control in order to have cruise control deployed, and you don't set anything about the specific cruise control configuration. We are just using the default, which is five. So it should be the user bumping, but anyway, I agree with having some retry logic right on on our side. But yes, bumping could be a way for kind of work around this. So from my perspective, uh, yeah, we should look into this. Uh, maybe the retry logic is one solution. If there are no objections. Yeah, I think uh, leaving the status as it is might also work as a kind of a, like a retry logic as well, because if the rebalance task was in progress, we would come back in on the timer, right? We would come back and check again. So maybe leaving it as as um, as the previous status would make it retry anyway, the reconciliation to retry. Um, but I yeah, I haven't tested it with higher uh, user tasks. I could go and do that. Um, but yeah, well, I yeah, but we should, Paolo's right, we, 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 that could be a, an endless game if you've got, we should, maybe it should be documented as well. It's like, I don't know if you can surface this issue, but with Recharge Logic, we probably solved the problem. So yeah, it's uh, getting a more definitive way of knowing whether it's actually finished or not. Yeah, in the end, uh, if I if I got right what Tina said, uh, anyway, we are going to reconcile again on the next uh, reconciliation, right? So the main thing would be that in this case, we are not moving straight away the Kafka rebalancing, not ready, but just waiting on the next reconciliation 
loop, maybe setting uh, a max number of attempts where uh, at some point after five reconciliation, it's still the case, we should raise something. Uh, and so highlighting that the queue is always at the top, but the, the kind of retry logic is still there, which is the reconciliation. It's just not moving the Kafka rebalance to not ready uh, at the beginning or immediately. Yeah, this kind of pulls into having a much better visibility about the, the rebounds as well. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a, a good thing to have. Yeah. Okay, so we agree. I, yeah, I think that we all agree that uh, we should keep this open and uh, having someone looking into this. I don't know if Tina is volunteering for that. Yeah, I can take a look into that. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. So let's remove the need triage and Tina, I'm going to assign that to you. Uh, then the next one here, this is about test container. Uh, to be honest, I don't know that much about test container, but it seems to be a, an exception. And I also saw that Marosh had already some discussion offline with Jakub. So it seems to yeah, be already Marosh taken. Marosh is not on the call. <clears throat> I think Marosh yeah. is not on the call, but he's looking into it. So yeah, I okay. think we should keep it. But of course, we can remove. Needs to rehash. And then this one, it was, I guess, from Kate, but Kate, you already have a PR open for that, right? And it's almost ready to be merged, I guess. Yes. Okay. Then this one, Kafka migration um, failing with external load balancer got stuck. So I have never used the WS load balancers, but it seems that something is going wrong with the controller using this load balancer, right, Jakub? I don't know. It's not like unless the user is using the pod readiness gate to bind the load balancer to the pod readiness. I don't see how it would be related, but even if the user does use the pod readiness gate, I don't think that would be a stream bug. So yeah, I don't know. The user didn't come back. Maybe we should convert it. Maybe instead of commenting on it, we should convert it to discussion. Ah, okay. You think that it's better than tagging the user and see, yeah, and coming back uh, on your uh, last uh, comment? I, I don't know. I wasn't completely sure on the beginning, but like my guess is that this does not seem like uh, this might be an issue the user is experiencing, but I'm not convinced this is a Strimzy bug. So, yeah. 
Yeah, or you can triage it and say that we triaged it and decided to convert it to discussion or whatever, but... Convert to discussion. Okay, and the last one. Uh, Fed it still from you. Yeah, so we decided that this is a mainly a documentation issue, uh, and I found this while debugging some system tests, uh, recovery system tests, uh, so that there is a mismatch between cluster ID uh, uh, generated and, and what's found in the already present volumes uh, when you are rebinding them. Uh, but yes, I will try to update the documentation uh, uh, because we have a recovery procedure uh, for that. Uh, yeah. So sorry, we will keep this open because it's a doc improvement. And uh, so if I got you right, are you taking care of this or? Yeah, I'm doing some tests and then I will open a VR for updating okay. the documentation, uh, recovery documentation. And by the way, there is a related system test that needs to be fixed, but this is already been worked, I guess, from Marosh. Or... Okay, so let me assign this to you. Thank you. You should, you should change the labels. And oh, yes. The title You're right. As well. So it's uh, documentation. It's not a bug. Okay. And also, uh, well, do we want to use something like doc? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Jacob, for raising this. <laughs> okay, and it brings us to the end of the issue triage. So, at the end of the call, if there is no any other business, we can wrap up. So, any other questions, ideas, something to discuss? seems not okay so thank you very much and uh, have a nice day evening yeah wherever you live thanks folks thanks Paul. thank you bye thanks. bye, bye. 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 bye.